Welcome to another edition of Southern Oregon University Wrap Up. This week we will talk about the volleyball team taking out William Jessup, the soccer team taking on Fresno Pacific, and the game of the week. The football team opened up the season against Montana Western. First, let's look at the SE volleyball team did against William Jessup University. The Rares dominated the whole match. They easily won two under three matches by at least 14 points and round to a sweep. The Warriors had made it interesting, though, during the second set as they took a 4-3 lead and the Rares went on a 72 run and the Warriors stormed back with a, with a run to cut down to 218. But the Rares had sealed it, uh, sealed the four-point set victory with a Natalie Sailor uh, kill to improve to four and six of the season, heading to the conference play on Tuesday against Oregon Tech. In soccer news now, the Rares found themselves amongst another overtime battle. This time, however, it's with the Firebirds of Fresno Pacific. The Firebirds scored the first goal of the match in the 37th minute by Jay Valeregta to take the one to nothing lead. The score remained so until senior Stephanie Carr tied it up in the 67th minute with the set by teammate Julie Zamzo. Hand to overtime, the Rares were in position to take the victory via a free kick into Carr. From 30, uh, 30 yards out, the senior nails a shot for a second goal and the fourth on the season for her. The Rares are now 2-0-1 on the season and will be traveling on the road to Holy Names coming up tomorrow, Monday at 1, 11 a.m. Now to our game of the week, Southern Oregon versus Montana Western. The Bulldogs versus the Raiders, Spiegelberg Stam, Medford Kickoff Classic. Let's go to the highlights and see how they did. The Bulldogs were first on the scoreboard in what seemed to be a promising battle of passing offenses as Jeff Logan connected to one of his receivers for the 7-0 lead. Southern Oregon answered back with a 4-yard run by senior running back Manny Berrigan to cut the lead down to 7-6. But instead of lining up for the extra point, the Warriors were for two behind what is known as the over the rainbow play. What's up with that play, coach? Well, we, we told them all summer that we, if we score the first touchdown, we're going to go for two, no matter what the score is, just to set the tempo for the year. It almost backfired on us, but we were able to score 50 uh, points after that. Into the same quarter, Bulldogs scored again on Tyrell Brand's touchdown run. But when the Bulldogs got the ball again, they were met by Rashawn Hines of the Raiders as he intercepted Jeff Logan's pass and returned to the house for six. The Raiders were down 14-12 to 12 at, the, at this point. On their next offensive possession, the Rares finally got the lead on a one-yard run by Manny Berrigan to make it 19-14 in favor of the Raiders. The Bulldogs tried to score again before halftime to go in with the lead, but they were met by a wall of Raider defenders on the goal line as time expired. Coming out from halftime, the Raiders finally spread their wings and soared away with the game. They scored 21 points alone in the third quarter, all from senior receiver Michael Olsen. That featured a passing touchdown, a rushing touchdown, and a punt return for a touchdown. The Rares had headed into the fourth quarter with a 41 to 21 lead. The Rares were going to score twice more in the fourth quarter by way of an Austin Dodge to Cole McKenzie 46 yard passing grab and a 64 yard run by freshman Zach Marshall to win the game. Of a final of 54 to 21. Now Dodge came away from the game with 347 yards passing, two touchdown passes on 26 completions. McKenzie led all receivers with nine receptions for 153 yards and one touchdown. Whereas the defense had picked up three interceptions on two separate quarterbacks while holding 
the Bulldogs to 3.8 yards on average on the ground. <laughs> So special teams contributed, the defense contributed by points on the board. So it was a great team victory because all three, offense, defense, and the kicking game played a factor in us scoring points here. Next week, the Raiders are traveling to Billings, Montana to face Rocky Mountain College. Howard has already said they can't make the same mistakes as they did on Saturday, next Saturday, because Rocky Mountain is good enough to capitalize on such mistakes. We're going to end here tonight with some box scores from all the SIU games from this weekend. As we lead out with Garth Brooks, Friends of Low Places, this is Jeremy McCall's signing off from Ashland, Oregon. Blame it all on my roots. I showed up in boots and ruined your blind tie affair. The last one to know, the last one to show, I was the last one you thought you'd see there. And I saw the surprise and the fear in his eyes When I took his glass of champagne And I toasted you, said, honey, we may be thrilled But you'll never hear me complain